Today we're going to be checking out the Watch Dogs Trilogy. We play as the badass Aiden Pierce, a master hacker that can break into basically anything, including cameras, radios, TVs, phones, computers, cars, trains, explosives, gates, bank accounts. Chicago is now run by a powerful operating system called CTOS created by the most corrupt company in the country, the Bloom Corporation. During an electrical heist, our mentor Damien Brank sent off a silent alarm revealing our identity. Aiden wanted to make sure his family stayed safe, so he took them out of the city, but a hitman attacked our car and got Aiden's six-year-old niece killed. Aiden's vengeance-filled rage would be unstoppable until he finds out who did it. Aiden and our business partner, Jordy Chin, track our hitman to a baseball stadium, but never managed to find the person who ordered the hit. We visit our sister Nicole and nephew Jackson, who we have quite a soft spot for, but find out someone won't stop harassing her. Listen, the police can trace this call. With the help of Bad Boy 17, aka Clara, we find our harasser is Damien Branks, who wants our help to find one of the hackers from the job that got them caught a year ago. A witness from the stadium needs to be dealt with, so we get ourselves caught, break out of our cell, and we have a little chat with him. 60 years? What are you doing, man? I'm just showing you an alternate future. After we escape prison, Damien kidnaps our sister, forcing us to work with him after we said we wouldn't. Our hideout is found, so we have to blow it to bits. Couple of deaths later and we're playing poker. Oh, shit. We get this remote that lets us gain access to a secret base called the Bunker. I want to take this time to appreciate just how much of a stealthy badass you can be in this game. We follow and blackmail this guy by the name of Bedbug so we can break into this gang leader's secure servers, but we still need to get an access key. How do we do that, you ask? By breaking into a human auction where the gang leader is to get our copy of the room key. Well, now that is some fucked up shit. We sneak Bedbug into the gang leader's hideout, who is his cousin, by the way, and get him to start downloading all the data, but he gets caught. With what little we downloaded, we find out the gang has blackmailed every major figure in the city, keeping them safe from the cops. Coming across an impossible to break encryption, we need the help of the famous hacker Raymond Kenny, who wasn't too happy we found him. He agrees to work with us if we delete his identity from the CTOS servers, but Damien gives Kenny's location away in exchange for full access to CTOS. After saving and bringing Kenny back to the bunker, we head to the gang leader's hideout ourselves this time to finish the download. We get caught again and have to finish off every last one of them. Clara betrays us and allows a hacker by the name of Default to break into our servers and delete everything we have. Damn it, Clara! Damien, annoyed with our progress, releases our name to the news and cops. I am a victim of a hate crime. We find the location of our sister, rescuer and escort her safely out of the city. In the data we decrypted, we find out the Irish mob boss named Lucky ordered the hit on us from back at the start. We break into his hotel and stop his heart by hacking his pacemaker. That's the ultimate kick in the nuts. Before he died, he sent Hitman after Clara and we didn't make it in time to save her. Kenny creates a virus to help shut Damien out of CTOS, and we track him to a lighthouse where our old buddy Jordy double crosses us, but we end up yeeting his ass into the water and putting an end to Damien once and for all. Better graphics, improved driving, shooting, hacking, parkour, and dozens of clothing options. This time we play as Marcus Holloway, a hacker determined to take down Bloom who framed him for a crime he didn't commit. The hacker group DeadSec sets up a trial to test and see if Marcus is worthy to join them. Spoiler alert, he totally is. This game takes a much different approach, requiring you to gain enough followers to use their computing power to eventually stop Bloom and its CEO, Dusan Nemec. Our first mission is to steal this car from a movie studio and rig it up so we can control control it remotely and perform stunts all across the city. This way, DeadSec ends up on the news and starts getting noticed by the public. Will give you the truth. Next stop is the New Dawn Temple to find ancient Sumerian tablets. It turns out the tablets were fake and the church was lying to its followers. DeadSec wants an uprising, so anything they can do to spread their message, they will. 
We steal a $30,000 robot, but we'll get back to that later. Marcus ends up meeting Dasan, the Bloom CEO, but he calls the cops on us so we have to escape. DeadSec, in a bit of a rut, calls up Raymond Kenny, who was helping Adrian from the first game. Horatio and Marcus head over to Noodle headquarters to break into this server farm. We get hacked by this annoying little shit named Lenora Kastner. I'll get you and it'll look like a bloody accident. We track down her hideout, which she rigged with explosives, but we're hackers. That's too easy! Someone starts spying on us, so we take their intel and find out it's the FBI. Are you serious? We sneak up onto the roof of the FBI building all nonchalant-like and take the data, but our teammate's wrench ends up getting caught and has his mask stolen, so we have to steal it back. Horatio ends up in the wrong place at the wrong time and gets kidnapped by gang members in a group known as the Tezkas. We find out where he was being held, but we never made it in time and he bled out. I'm here, man. I'm going, hey, call 911. Enraged, we track down and slaughter a whole group of Tezkas and burn their stash of green green. But of course, we're just getting started because now we've got to sneak onto a boat and burn their flower stash. I don't know about you, but whenever I'm given the option in a game to stealth a mission, I will repeat it over and over just to get it perfect because when you do, it's so much more satisfying than just running and gunning the place. We hunt down three of the Tezkas top members. Enjoy this clip of me missing 20 shots, then sprinting half a mile just to catch one of them. Quinta's out. And finally, we take out their leader, Pablo, because if you're gonna go after some of them, you might as well go after all of them. That's for Horatio, bitch. Kenny wants us to put some tech into a rocket set to launch so we can get into Bloom's servers via satellite. Freaky physics compilation. We sneak onto a barge, steal a server, and fly away on this big-ass drone, hack a crane, which I totally didn't fall out of, and hack some data that proves the election was rigged and escape from a zip line. Remember that robot we stole from back at the start? Now it's time to Trojan horse it into a server room and set off an EMP blast. We end up in a prototype weapons lab where I get to drive this badass mechanical spider and blow the living hell out of everything in sight. This whole time we've been gaining a bigger and bigger following, and now we have enough power to go after after Bloom. The finale was a little weak. I feel like taking down Bloom didn't have as much impact as it should have, and Dasan just ends up getting arrested in the end. But the gameplay is so fun that I honestly wasn't upset that the story was a little weaker than the first game. It's got badass masks, amazing melee combat, spider bots, and big ass drones that you can fly on. In the last game, we had to gain as many followers as possible to take down Bloom, but in this one, we get to recruit just about anyone off the streets to play as with different weapons and abilities to fight the five villains of London. We have Sabine Brandt, who is the leader of London DedSec, but also the leader of the group fighting against them, Zero Day. Nigel Cass, the corrupt CEO of military group Albion, who wants to replace the police force with drones. Mary Kelly involved in not only slave trading, but organ harvesting as well. I couldn't think of a more horrible job if I wanted to. Sky Larson, the founder of Broca Tech, who believes humans should be transferred to AI no matter how many lives are lost to get there. And finally, Richard Malik, who framed DedSec for killing the SIRS director of counterterrorism, Emily Child. We sneak around in Mary Kelly's house to find out she's implanted chips in her slaves' brains, and when they disobey her... We end up breaking into Sky Larson's underground fever dream cottage to find out she's actually a complete nutcase who experimented on her dog, brother, and mother for the sake of humanity. We find out where Sky is hiding and have to stop her before she uploads to the cloud. We can be safe, free, and happy forever. We hire an ex Albion guard to spy on a meeting Nigel Cass is having, and surprise, surprise, he's also a nutcase. Sneak past a couple of lasers, and we fly our drone to take out a power grid and get access to top Project Themis files, which we have to destroy. Richard Malik leaves an SOS for DedSec, so we go to rescue him, but it's all a ploy to overthrow the SIRS director, Emily Child. We meet Child, and she shows us Malik double-crossed us both. We try to work with her, but Malik kills Emily and frames us for it. We kidnap Malik and assume he's the leader of Zero Day, but it turns out he isn't. We learn Kelly is actually working with Zero Day, so we disable the mic microchip in her slaves' heads to help them rebel against her. We were originally going to take her into custody, but we let them get the revenge instead. 
game crash. Nigel Cast built this huge manned drone prototype and we have this pretty fun boss battle and wipe him out. Zero Day is all that remains. We infiltrate the secret Zero Day bunker and find out Sabine, who has been working with us the whole time, is actually working against us. I like how much more threatening Zero Day felt than Bloom did in Watch Dogs 2. We go to the top of Bloom Tower where we find Sabine. <laughs> Bye, have a great time. And that has been the Watch Dogs trilogy all in one video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see y'all in the next one.